Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at weather for instead 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 16th of January. I sound like I'm on high tar cigarettes. Oh, um, <laughs> I'm very, very, oh dear, very husky today, aren't I? I feel fine though, so I don't know what's wrong with the throat this time, blimey. Anyway, never mind, I'm going to persevere. So day 10 will take us to the 16th of January, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Oh, very ropey sounding gab. They run to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and that gets us into the beginning of February. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say the first video it says a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. Check out that one. Right, I think we'd better crack on before the, <laughs> before the voice goes entirely. Um, right, so central in temperature is currently sitting at 3 0.2. That is uh, 0.6 of a degree above 61 to 1990 average, and it's provisional to uh, yesterday to the 5th of January. That's going to drop into the twos, maybe even into the ones, I think, through the rest of this week, as we are in for some pretty cold nights. These are the GFS uh, precipitation and upper air temperature ensembles. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. Starting off colder than average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. But they're going to start to uh, recover through the weekend. And next week, looking quite mild from an upper air temperature perspective. That's as high pressure builds back. So it's going to be critical where that high pressure is sitting as to the temperature and the feel of the weather next week. Despite the upper air temperature becoming mild, it could actually still stay calm in some areas, not particularly for more southern and eastern regions, I think. Just depends how much of a southwesterly flow we pick up. Later on, we see the upper air temperature beginning to drop away again a little bit. Precipitation-wise... <clears throat> Uh, precipitation wise, sorry, <laughs> we uh, look a little bit showery over the uh, next few days, but drier during the course of next week. Temperature anomalies from the 6th to 14th of January are coming out below average cold of an average week to come. And precipitation anomalies from the 6th to 14th of January, most areas drier than north, but is slightly on the wetter side towards the east. Latest wind blow map from earthnorschool.net has low pressure in the east and we bring down these cold winds once again uh, from the north. So cold air is setting in from the north again and uh, we'll be staying cold then until at least the weekend. OK, let's start going through the chart data then. We have the latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Thursday. Low pressure travelling through uh, northern France then. <coughs> <coughs> So, sorry, if one low pressure travelling through northern France could bring a little bit of snow to southern counties, but to keep him winged in to, from a cold northerly direction, then a ridge of high pressure slips over the country on Friday for lower pressure starts heading in on Saturday. And then into Sunday and Monday, high pressure takes over. It's building up from the south this time. We're losing the northern blocking. Sending the wind back into west southwesterly. So, certainly for the north and the west, it turns milder with both southwesterly winds. But in the south and the east, you have to question just how much of that milder air is going to get through where we're centered in, um, under that area of high pressure. I can't go a bit further north with that area of low pressure on Thursday, threatening more of a south pass with a bit of snow. And then on Friday, looking mostly dry but cold. Into the weekend, their pressure heading in from off the Atlantic. But basically, high pressure is in control and in the ascendancy. Um, early next week, winds start to uh, switch around to the southwest. So becoming mild up Scotland Island. Probably still quite chilly with an increasing risk of fog for England and Wales. KMA looking like that. Again, we've got that low pressure through the channel uh, on, on uh, Thursday. And then winged in from the north as it uh, exits away. Friday mostly dry under a ridge of high pressure. Then lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. Switching the wind around to southwest. We all turn milder. Even the south and southeast turns milder um, over the weekend and into next week with those southwesterly winds. And we keep it mild then right the way up to the 18th of January. So by that point, we'll probably offset all of this cold weather. And we'll, we'll probably be back to close to average temperatures. 
Panthers. Uh, with these, the uh, southwest winds continuing to waft up from me. As well as very mild KMA today. Uh, that is how the GFS Midnight Run is looking. Once again, low pressure travelling from northern parts of France on Wednesday night into Thursday. Then high pressure builds behind it. Um, the GFS Midnight Run wants to take that high pressure towards Scandinavia over the weekend. And to be begin to pull wind in for you. So the GFS keeps it cold for most of us, even into the start of next week with winds in from the east. So a lot of uncertainty, isn't there, from the weekend onwards about exactly what's going to happen with this area of high pressure and where it's going to sit. And then the GFS big night run really going to town with high pressure after that. Uh, just some slightly lower pressure coming in at the very end. And perhaps a hint of some high pressure building to the northwest of us again. That's the 22nd of January. Could we go colder for the end of January? Long way off that. This is the GFS 6 there. So again, uh, cold, naughty winds on Thursday. Staying cold into the weekend, but not taking the high pressure to Scandinavia. So by the end of the weekend, we'll start up next week. Up come those southwest winds to GFS 6 they're turning things a lot milder next week. And we keep it mild then all the way to the end of the GFS 6 they run with some low pressure coming in from Atlantic. But a lot of dry weather has to be said. But all the time winds generally come from a southerly, southwesterly direction. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share and subscribe. Make sure to everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget get to tell your friends about Dallas Webbies, get them to subscribe to show everyone for uh, doing that. 50 subscribers will get us to 19.4k, so if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, right, GM, again, bringing low pressure through the channel on Thursday, then under a ridge on Friday. Low pressure trying to come in from off the Atlantic at weekend, turning things milder to the north of the west, but still quite cold, I think, over the weekend with further frosts in the southeast. By next week, though, we're all milder with the gem as those west southwesties break through, and that's how we look as we get to day 10. Pretty mild with winds coming up from the southwest, then. And then the east gem keeps it cold for Thursday and the Friday. Friday into the weekend, trying to turn a bit milder, but still pretty cold, I think, for those more southern and east regions. The East Ham also trying to reach a high pressure towards Scandinavia over the weekend. So the East Ham keeps certainly the south and east anyway, cold to the start of next week. The north and the west looking uh, milder. Uh, high pressure continues to dominate the weather, so mild in the north, probably still quite cold to the middle of next week in the south with further frost. And um, that's the setup at day 10. Still high pressure, high pressure, but look where the high pressure begins to reach to. And in the extended range, the ECM uh, takes high pressure back to Greenland, turns things colder again, and <laughs> drops in these northerly winds. So into the second half of January, off and running, we go into another spell of the cold weather. Courtesy of uh, Northern Blocking. Uh, that's how we end up with the uh, GF, uh, with the ECM Midnight Run, I should say. And uh, if that looks familiar, <laughs> it's because it is. We're basically back to the pattern we've had, you know, over the past um, day or so. We're blocking to the north, cold air uh, to the north of the east, and low pressure running into that from the southwest. So uh, we're not going to go over that again because we've had enough of that over the past. <laughs> <laughs> over the past few days. But suppose say the East Ham does get us back to cold weather uh, beyond day 10. This is a precipitation forecast based on that East Ham run from Tibet.com up to day 10. So wintry showers into the northwest over the next few days. Luminous snow, uh, snow flow to the extreme south there from uh, Wednesday into Thursday. Um, but uh, most of that is over the other side of the channel. End of the week, a little bit of rain, sleet, snow into western areas, but otherwise a lot of dry weather uh, to come and keeping it pretty dry all the way up to date, 10 to be honest. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 16th of January. 13 members of the ECM Ensemble with high pressure over to the south of the country. So that's bringing the air in from the west. That looks mostly dry and pretty mild. Another 13 with high pressure to the west. So it's mostly dry. A little bit cooler perhaps with the wind direction there. Seven with more of a mid-Atlantic ridge going up towards Greenland. That could bring in quite a cold sort of northerly flow. 
And then we've got six, including the control of the operational run, reaching that high pressure up towards Greenland and threatening to drop down a cold northerling. We've got another six with high pressure between Iceland and Scandinavia. That's bringing in more of an easterly flow. And then we've got another six with high pressure out to the west going up towards Greenland. And again, that's having a go at dropping in a northerly. Most of the options are high pressure dominated at day 10, so a lot of dry weather. The devil is in the detail with where that high pressure is sitting and where it goes could it go back to greenland same as cold again in two weeks time these are the options that we've got and it gets us to the 21st of january 27 members of the east Shem on so high pressure to the east low pressure to the west so that's milder with winds in from the southwest close that turn and settled as well 17 with high pressure between iceland and scotland mostly dry but could be quite cold with winds in from an east or northeast direction and seven with blocking around Greenland, low pressure to the south and east, and bring down that cold northeasterly flow, cold and wintry. That includes the control and the operational, but only seven going that far. So the control and operational run, well, the operational run, this, basically, this. Um, <laughs> is uh, not very well supported by uh, the ECM ensembles today. But it doesn't mean it's wrong, you know, it just means it doesn't have a great deal of support. However, this scenario here isn't all that far away from it. And so if you put the 17 there together with the 7 there, um, you've still got a minority in favour of a colder outcome uh, to two weeks out as 27 beats 17 plus 7. But uh, nevertheless, it's still quite a significant minority keeping it cold into uh, the second week. CFS B2, finally, and then I'm going to rest my voice. <laughs> uh, these are 500 millibar. High tide breakdown week bids. The first week bid takes us from the 6th to the 12th of January. The next week, we're blocking around Greenland, low pressure through the north and west. You're looking cold and wintry in the week ahead. But all change for week two which is the 13th to the 19th of January, with high pressure through the west of Europe, and we bring up a minor southwesterly flow then. Week three <laughs> will be the 20th to the 26th of January. High pressure is to the south, low pressure way to the north. Winds coming up from that mild southwesterly direction. And then finally, week four will be the 27th of January to the 2nd of February with high pressure over continent, low pressure out to the northwest and winds remaining from a southwesterly direction. That also looks mild. So the CFS once this week's out of the way is all mild, mild, mild again. But again, remember, the CFS had to be absolutely dragged, absolutely dragged, kicking and screaming to uh, this cold weather that we've had over the past uh, over the past week or so. Um, no, the CFS will, will shift when the weather shifts, really. Otherwise, it just gets itself stuck in a rut, I think, a lot of the time. Having said that, if you were watching the Christmas updates, you'll remember, I'm off on a tangent totally now. I should get the video wrapped up to rest my voice. But um, I'll just say that if you was watching the Christmas updates, particularly in November, um, you will know that the CFS, the CFS runs that we use for those um, Christmas updates, a lot of the time, they were indicating like a cold first half to January, and that has verified. So maybe there's something in the CFS. Maybe I give it too much stick. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, anyway, we're done. So, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Web. It's get them to subscribe to. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that for us. Right, well, I might try and get a little, I thought I might try and get a little snow watch job this evening for the far sale on Wednesday and Thursday. So, that might pop up a little bit later on. Um, we'll see. And then tomorrow, we're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We will be uh, doing the extended EC forecast as well for your extended European outlook, and there'll be a 10 to 14 day or two. So, a uh, lot to look forward to. Please keep checking back to the channel for more. For this one, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.